See, foreign attacks on India are a lot like herpes. They flare up every couple of years, they cause a little bit of discomfort, and there isn't really much you can do to get rid of it permanently. Not that, you know, I would know anything about that. Anyway, here's the video. Hello, hello and welcome to this English series on the Sham Sharma Show Global Channel. I am the CEO of Secularism, Sham Sharma. Thank you very much for joining me today. This video is part of a series of English videos where I take the message of the show and India's side of the story to a broader non-Hindi speaking audience where we'll try to shine a light on issues such as media bias against India, critical race theory, critical caste theory, what Hindutva is, and hopefully try to educate a broader global audience about these issues as well. So if you'd like to see me make more of such videos please let me know in the comment section down below and make sure to share this video widely as well and now on with the video. So as I was saying, foreign attacks on India often tend to be a bit like herpes and this herpes has flared up yet again in the past couple of weeks. First there was this BBC article that was trying to find out why women vote for the BJP. And the same article by the way quoted zero women BJP voters in an article about women BJP voters. What? Seriously man, this is like taking a survey about human beings' favorite food and only talking to dogs about it. Shockingly, a new study has found that the favorite food of humans is vomit. Then also a research school at a prominent US university smeared a Hindu advocacy group, the Hindu American Foundation, as Islamophobic. But the main attack or the toolkit or the WhatsApp group message that has been spreading across the internet seems to be about the ongoing Muslim genocide in India. Mesut Ozil, who invited Turkish President Erdogan to be a guest of honor at his wedding is very concerned about the shocking state of Muslims in India. By the way, this is the same Erdogan who is accused of committing war crimes in Syria and dismantling human rights and democratic norms in Turkey at an alarming rate. So you invite this guy to your wedding, but you're also worried about human rights. This is a bit like somebody acting like they're the biggest feminist in the world, but at the same time, the godfather of their kids is bloody Harvey Weinstein. Then there were more idiotic tweets by Padma Lakshmi who was sickened by the apparent celebration of violence against Muslims in India. And she wants fellow Hindus to reject hate and be true Hindus because all of a sudden Padma Lakshmi is the leading expert on Hinduism. The British Labour Party where anti-Semitism is as popular as Sachin Tendulkar is in India, whose last leader was fired because he was an anti-Semite, whose leaders have happily stood shoulder to shoulder with actual terrorist organizations like the Jammu and Kashmir Liberation Front. That Labour Party is apparently extremely concerned about human rights and bigotry and a number of Labour MPs have asked Boris Johnson to bring up the issue of Muslim safety during his trip to India. Honestly, the British Labour Party have done to irony what Shah Rukh Khan did to Shilpa Shetty in the film Bazigar. But where is all this concern stemming from? And what information or data points are these people using to make these extremely grave and broad claims? So I think that a good idea of what all this outrage is based on can be gained by looking at Mehdi Hassan and his show on Peacock, where he did a segment about how Muslims are in grave danger at the hands of the far right BJP. Seeing this video, you'll get a very good idea about where these celebrities and commentators are getting their information from. You will also see why there is such a great amount of distrust in people not just in India but across the world in mainstream media. Honestly the truly pathetic thing is that all of the stuff that Mehdi Hassan is talking about is old information that has already been thoroughly debunked. Exactly the same videos like the one that Mehdi Hassan has just produced have been produced a couple of years ago as well with basically the same claims which have been thoroughly debunked themselves. Honestly liberal media are basically flat earthers at this point. It doesn't matter how much evidence you present to them, it will just not change their minds. First of all, what you'll find very interesting in his tweet is that he talks about other far-right figures like Putin, Orban and Marine Le Pen, but he will never use their religion to attack them. However, Modi's religion and his ideology of Hindutva are central in his apparent hatred of Muslims. What's also interesting is that terrorists and Islamic dictatorships around the world never tire of saying that they gain their inspiration for their horrible acts from their religious book and their religion, but for some reason, according to liberal media, their religion has absolutely nothing to do with it. Hindu nationalist supremacist ideology. Scholars are now 
literally warning about genocide there. Founded in 1925, they were really into the politics of Mussolini and Hitler, the RSS. Now the problem with Mehdi Hassan's videos start from the very beginning. This is the level of research that this man and his team have done. And this is the level of research that Western media does in general about India. They don't read Savarkar, they don't read Deen Dayal Upadhyay, who are the key inspirational figures for the BJP and the RSS, who have only ever advocated for national unity and Hindu unity past caste and past regional divisions. The Western media and Western intellectuals claim that the BJP and the RSS are inspired by Hitler and Mussolini, whereas even a basic, a cursory look at the lives of Hindutva intellectuals like Savarkar and Lala Lajpat Rai will very clearly show you that these people were not inspired by Hitler and Mussolini. They were instead inspired by Italian nationalists like Giuseppe Mazzini and Giuseppe Garibaldi. Giuseppe Mazzini, for people that don't know, was an Italian nationalist and you can see in this clip what his goals for Italy were. Mazzini was of the staunch conviction that the matter of Italian unification was a divine duty ordained by God himself. He also stressed Italian self-realization without the intervention of foreign powers. His ultimate vision was that of a utopian Italian republic that respected the rights of the everyman. So the goals that Giuseppe Mazzini had for Italy are similar to the goals that people like Savarkar and other Hindutva ideologues and supporters of Hindutva have had for India. In fact, RSS has a bloody Muslim wing, man. Did Hitler ever have any Jewish generals? And the funny thing is, is that Western media's evidence is based upon basic hearsay. He says, scholars are talking about Muslim genocide. Well, scholars also claim that taking vaccines makes you gay and that chicken wings makes baby penises small. Which, you know, the really disturbing thing about that is how many baby penises did that study measure to come to that conclusion. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. The point is that you can get scholars to say basically anything. What's important is how you back the claims that you're making. Hindutva ideology has been really influential among some of the worst people and not just in India. If you remember the Muslim-hating far-right Norwegian mass murderer Anders Breivik, the man who massacred 77 people in Norway in 2011, he cited Hindutva in his 1,500-page manifesto, pledging support for the deportation of all Muslims from India. You get the idea, right? So this guy and his entire research team of this multi-billion dollar corporation that he works for could not find an example of a single Hindu terrorist. So he literally had to go and pick a far-right white guy from Norway. Well, you know what they say about the Norwegians, man. Notorious Hindu nationalists, all of them. Western researchers have called it a one-sided systemic pogrom backed by the BJP. And this is a perfect example of how Western media only cares about its own opinion. Because he refuses to acknowledge that Indian courts and Indian investigative agencies have said time and again that there is no proof of Modi's involvement or his government's involvement in these riots. But who gives a shit what brown people think, right? I mean, this kind of behavior honestly reminds me of this meme. Nope, sorry, Kevin Bacon wasn't in Footloose. What? Of course he was. No, he wasn't, you lose. Of course he was, he was the star. Nope, you're wrong, look it up. I don't have to look it up, it's common knowledge. Nope. He was on the nope. cover of no nope. People Magazine nope. when the movie nope. came. Everyone nope. knows Kevin nope. Bacon was a star nope. of Footloose. No, nope. it was nope. a huge movie, nope. he was the nope. lead. No, 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 Human rights groups, both Indian and international, also say Modi and his local government were complicit. Some even say the riots might have been premeditated. Oh. Some say, well, some also say that Mehdi Hassan loves to dress up like a French maid and have the president of NBC spank him. Listen, some can say whatever they want, it doesn't make it a fact. Although I have a feeling that the French maid thing might just be true. I don't know, it could be, some say. If Obama mainstreamed Modi and everything he represented, Trump took him to the altar and tied the knot marrying the far-right politics of the world's two biggest democracies. It's so easy for Western media, and particularly Mehdi Hassan, to call anybody he doesn't agree with far-right. But at the same time, Mehdi Hassan was happy to work for a news organization that is funded by the Qatari government, a government which openly supports far-right Muslim extremists. And for all the hatred that Mehdi Hassan has for the far-right, he was far too eager to write flattering letters to the Daily Mail, a news organization that Mehdi Hassan today considers far right. Hate crimes against minorities have skyrocketed from Dalits to Christians and most of all towards Muslims. Lynchings. Yeah, lynchings of Muslims rumored to have eaten or even transported cows, a holy animal for Hindus. 
This is the level of research in Western media and this is the level of research from Mehdi Hassan and his team of researchers that he doesn't even know that factchecker.in shut down their hate crime tracker because their database made massive mistakes in data collection because of horrendously selective reporting of violence across India. Last week, authorities in Delhi took nine bulldozers through a city and destroyed parts of a mosque while people were inside and raised dozens of homes and commercial buildings most belonging to Muslims. He did such a deep dive and his team did such extensive research that they didn't even realize that the mosque that was destroyed was destroyed during an anti-encroachment drive. Under the same anti-encroachment drive, hundreds of temples across India have also been destroyed. This is your research, man? Listen, honestly, on a serious note, I want to talk to NBC Peacock one-on-one, -on -one, okay? You can clearly see, NBC, that Mehdi Hassan has done absolutely zero research for the show and yet you have given him a show and a fat salary. Salary, I assume. So how about this? How about I propose to you a deal? If you give me a show and if you give me a fat salary, I promise to do a full one hour of research every day for your show. Come on. It's a great deal. And look, I can tell jokes too. Why did Mehdi Hassan cross the road? Because the other side of the road offered him more money to lie. See, what Western media doesn't understand or doesn't want to understand is that the problem in India isn't of this fictional Muslim genocide. The problem in India is of the state's poor capacity to handle street violence, which is why violence often affects Hindus and Muslims both. And because there are simply more Hindus than there are Muslims in India, whenever religious riots break out, it is often more or Muslims that tend to die. The problem isn't of Muslim genocide. It's a failure of the Indian state to bolster or strengthen its law and order capabilities. But the problem is, is that this reason is not sensational enough. That's not going to get you support and retweets from Padma Lakshmi and Mesut Ozil. So to conclude, this is the shabby, surface level, disingenuous and outdated understanding of India in mainstream Western media today. Listen, I'm just happy that at this point, they at least know what Modi looks like. They know Modi looks like this and not this guy. These kinds of disingenuous and uneducated attacks are why Indians distrust Western media and hell, their own country's people distrust their own media. Listen, you can say that Mesut Ozil, Padma Lakshmi or the British MPs are misguided and misinformed. I think they're being disingenuous, but whatever. But what excuse does the media have? Nothing. They have this image of India in their minds and they're willing to lie, cheat and steal to make sure that that image of India gets perpetuated. Honestly, at this point, liberal Western media is a religious cult. Simple as that. So the question becomes, what can we do? What can you do? Well, as you can see, the members of Western media are very well funded and supported by their audiences, by large corporations and even entire nation states. So we need to build companies and ecosystems that can rival these organizations and eventually become even bigger than them. And the only way that happens is if we put our money where our mouths are. So. What you can do is find the media that you like, that you enjoy. Whether they're authors, journalists, content creators like myself, artists, whoever you like, but make sure to set aside a certain amount of money every month to support content creators and media that you like. A perfect example of this is a company like The Daily Wire. Now, I don't agree with The Daily Wire about a lot of things, but The Daily Wire has done an excellent job in rallying anti-woke support behind them. And through the financial support of their supporters and also through some corporate support, I'm sure, they've created a very successful entity that now not only produces new shows, but also TV shows, documentaries, and even bloody movies. We need to replicate that success and that model for Indian content creators as well. Only then does India's side of the story stand a chance to break past the walls of bias created by extremely biased and disingenuous Western media. And I want to ask you, what do you think we can do? Do or what do you think Indians can do to fight back against this kind of misinformation? Please let me know in the comment section down below. As usual, if you like today's episode, if you like this series, if you want to see more English episodes in this series, please let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, press the bell icon, share this video as much as you can, help this video become successful so that I can create more and more content in English for you guys as well. Other than that, if you'd like to support the Sham Sharma show as well, please make sure to become a patron on Patreon. The link is in the description down below as well. Other than that, I will see you for the next episode. And until then, stay happy, stay healthy. We'll see you next time. And to all of you.
et Sac le plan. 